Yola, the Adamao State Capital, now plays host to hundreds of thousands of internally displaced persons whose homes, businesses and other means of livelihood have been destroyed by Boko Haram. The reason why Yola is the most preferred destination for the internally displaced persons is simple. Yola is supposed to be more safe and secure since it is the seat of power of the Adamao State Government. Some of the internally displaced persons are from northern part of Adamawa, particularly Mubi, Michika, Madagali, Maiha and Hong local government areas, while others are from neighboring Borno State, the epicenter of the insurgency. There is no doubt that these internally displaced persons are people devastated. However, some among them demonstrate that they are indeed global citizens. Kelo Apago, a mother of seven from Dagu village in Askira Uba local government of Borno state, while fleeing from Boko Haram attack in Lhasa, found a boy of three years between Lhasa and Dile. She heard a child crying under some shrubs when she was approaching a stream for a drink of water after trekking for hours. She carried the baby, marched on in the company of her children till she reached Yula. Glory Yakubu, an official of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, makes this confirmation. So we now asked her, is she going to keep the child with her or we should take the child to the orphanage home? She now said no, she's going to keep the child with her since it is God that has given her the child. We now said okay. The child got used to her, he just took her as his mom. If she leaves him and maybe trying to do something, he will be crying and be following her around. In a related development, Mariam Buba from Gulag is always nursing and nurturing a child she also had to surrogate despite religious and ethnic differences. <laughs> Mariam also found Chinda Wulia in the bush while fleeing Boko Haram in Gulag area of Adamao state. Although parents of Chinda have discovered that the young boy now lives with his surrogate mother, the bond between them is such that no one can now separate them. It was reliably gathered that Mariam and Chinda, who was in pre-nursery school, had an accident while fleeing from Boko Haram. For 28-year-old Lamy Joseph, apart from spending as much as 15,000 naira, an equivalent of $93.8, transporting the sick and aged away from Madagali town when Boko Haram struck, she also took with her eight children of her kith and kin to relatively save Yula before parents of the children came and took them away. <laughs> While in Gombe, on her way to Yola, an Igbo man from southeast Nigeria could not believe that one person could carry as much as eight children. Moved by this gesture, he bought the children some clothing as well as food. <laughs> Muhammad Baza, a Muslim with 11 children and three wives, now plays host to 21 internally displaced persons, among them four Muslims and 17 Christians. To ni apa interna ni na gani watu dumutunde kipati irongana abu yena da watamano fani azuchi ansa daban. Ba wewe na pata chiwa geskia bani. Duminke amutsa yinka chiwa kai Christiani, inharutaka nini kada Allah, kai imani da Allah. 
ko kai musulmi ba a dinin da tace ko ka ji ka musgunawa wani ko kuma ka kashe mutu he believes that any religion worth its name does not segregate kill or teach violence the coordinator of justice peace and development commission of the catholic diocese of yula reverend father morris kwaranga also points out that religion should not be a reason for discrimination particularly when it comes to life threatening issues the reason why we the catholic diocese of yola under the office of the justice and peace commission we are called upon to attend to the challenge of uh, addressing the needs of the displaced people when they came into our place here when baza michika were overrun uh, precisely on the 15th of September, uh, people came in here to the gate looking for food and shelter. So we were forced to take them in and make provision for them. Demonstrating the willingness to help beyond the walls of religion and ethnicity was what made Mayra Mabature, a mother of five, to sell her clothes to help transport people away from the danger zone of Michika when Boko Haram attacked. She bought the clothes for 3,500 naira, an equivalent of $21.8, but sold it for only 1,000 naira, equivalent to $6.5, just to save lives. As Father Morris hinted, the greatest challenge now is that of building a post-conflict society. Already, Reverend Sister Catherine Hannan the initiator and director adult literacy program in Wurojabe, a suburb of Yula, is bringing both Muslims and Christians together, not just to make them literate and numerate, but to make them learn how to live in peace and harmony. In my experience, if people organize themselves, not alone will they be shut down, but the service bodies will come offering their services to know what they can do. So really, and at the moment, the biggest challenge is, say for the NGO, the people are interested, but now they need a little coaching just to get off the ground, but there's nobody to coach them. There's nobody there to coach them. Suleiman Halidu says that adult education is a commendable program, but regrets that the fear of attack by Boko Haram, even in Yula, is making people leave Yula for safer towns across the country. No one give them this education pertaining Hausa and also the English. And we have some, the other part, we have computer literates and also the keyboarding. And we have even the three distribution. We have been doing it here on behalf of sister. Since 2009, we have had massive, massive insurgency in this country. Killings, destruction by Boko Haram, families to families, towns and towns, villages have been completely destroyed by Boko Haram. And the biggest challenge before the Nigerian government is how to overcome this division that has been created by the Boko Haram insurgency, particularly for the internally displaced people, because these people have left behind their families and their homes. So the problem now, is if these people get back home, how do they collaborate with those that they have left behind? How do they live together with those that they have left behind who collaborated with Boko Haram in order to destroy their homes? So the biggest challenge for the Nigerian government is to come up with a specific post-conflict reconstruction strategy. A strategy that is able to unite these people, a strategy that is able to bring about reconciliation in the society, a strategy that is able to ensure these people are able to live together in peace. And I think in a very simple and ordinary way, that strategy has begun here and now. Where we can see together Christians and Muslims coming to learn in order to empower themselves to participate effectively in the Nigerian economy. And I think bit by bit, small by small, that is the way we can eventually overcome the problems of the insurgency and begin to reconstruct and to rebuild our country, our society, and our nation. We hope and with a vibrant faith in God that one day Nigeria will reach that stage. And we hope that the Nigerian government is listening and listening well.